Hello, everybody. My name's Llama Joe, and welcome to my channel. All right, we're back with the letter. And uh, I just had to show you guys something here. Because this, I've just been using this to, like, gauge, like, how long each person's chapter is going to be, you know? And okay. This is, this is uh, Becca's. Now, if you look down, you see this where my mouse is, this little red, red little bar here. Okay. So, to, to give some reference, okay, so there is Becca's, um, which Zach is so far the longest one we've done. That's Zach's. As you can see, Zach's is still about twice the size. And if you go over to, like, Marianne, let me move this back over here. And Isabella, they're about twice the size of Zach's, and then Hannah's the shortest. It's a little, it's you know, about a quarter longer than Marianne and, and Isabella's. So that's Zach's, which is double the length of the bars Rekas. So this is how much we have to go for Rebecca's story. This game is so long. So much longer than I did. I hope Luke's is the shortest of all. I hope his is just like from like here to here and then done. I hate Luke. I don't know if I can play with him. Okay. Let's do this. Whew. This is how it begins, or so they say. With a gentle wind drifting through wide open windows, muffled laughters and footsteps fading behind empty hallways, and the light kiss of the afternoon sun. Soon there would be a call, a crossing of thresholds into the unknown. Maybe we're off to some grand adventure? Or diving into another gripping mystery? One can't really tell. For all I know, a hero might even come sweep me off my feet if I'm lucky. That's not exactly a bad thing when you think about it. But this is far from one, isn't it? A riveting tale, that is. Oh, um... Let's, uh, let's look profiles, too. Rebecca, let's read her. 29. Scottish. Yeah. Cool. Although the Scottish descent, although of Scottish descent, she grew up in Luxburn and even went to school at St. Goretti. Her parents were professors of European history and Southeast Asian history at Luxburn University. They were often busy and that forced Rebecca to be independent early on. Surrounded by books and instilled with a love for learning, she was a star pupil and was often called a teacher's pet for it. Her passions for academics leading to a career in the industry was expected of her. She came out of her shell in her high school years and started becoming the spitfire she is now. Before then, Ashton was her only friend, though she found him aggravating at first. Independent and used to taking care of others, it was no surprise when she helped out the young foreigner who moves in next door. There we go. Alright. Uh, oh yeah, where, where are we in the time? Oh, I guess we won't know until a journal entry. The mild breeze, the faint murmurs, the warm rays, painting every nook and cranny a fiery hue. They are all as real as they can get. As much as I want to write a little tale out of this, I'm far from someone who can. Fleeting fancies, that's what these are. Merely passing thoughts to occupy an idle mind while waiting for another busy workday to end. Then again, maybe in another life, I am one? Who knows? But at present, what, have, what I have and what I've chosen to be? Well, I won't last years here if I find teaching rowdy adolescents a tedious job, will I? Admittedly, the whole affair isn't exactly as grand or exciting as I had imagined as a child. If I weren't so stubborn and too passionate about the whole idea, I probably would have quit a long time ago. But it's always the kids that make it worthwhile, isn't it? As if in agreement, as soon as my pen slides into a neat circle against the paper I'm grading, the final bell rings. Like a dam that is open, students begin piling out into the hallway soon after. For a short minute, I let loose. I, I let the noise fill my ears, let my mind wander to a place far removed from all the hubbub. Solitary moments like this have come few and far between lately. Even my own home hasn't been as quiet as I usually as I prefer. Though in hindsight, the entire place hasn't been the same either since Isabella moved in next door. And if her fussing over a minor cold last week tells anything, I might as well throw any idea of solitude out the nearest balcony so long as she lives nearby. At the memory, my eyes automatically shift over the bottle sitting at the edge of my desk. <laughs> a chuckle escapes me as I reach for it. A little ball of energy and enthusiasm. <laughs> that big baby. Mother Hen, she calls me, and then says and does the same thing right after. It's not that I'm unused to being on the receiving end of other people's worries, or I feel I'm some sort of apprehension over her feelings. 
If I'm to be completely honest, it's actually amusing how someone can be childlike one minute, then act like a responsible adult the next. But there's a dissonance there, both in her actions and words. Although she may not look like it, may not say anything, may not lose her cheer. One way or another, I know these troubles have weighed down on her lately. Her face says it all. That, that big numpty. As she thinks I won't notice, she's got another thing coming for her. That's how she owes has always been. I do understand that part, loud and clear. It's just that I'd really rather not pass another burden on to Or her. become one myself. Aren't I supposed to be the one taking care of them? Though I guess that's simply one of those things people eventually grow away from once you all started leading different lives. Not completely different, I hope. Somehow the thought makes me feel uneasy. Thankfully, before stranger ideas can take root in my head, a faint buzzing comes from my back, cutting through the rest of my thoughts. A small frown forms my lips when the screen lights up and an unknown number flashes. For a long second, my thumb overs the answer button. Even the voice that responds once I do accept the call is wholly unfamiliar. Hello? Is this Rose? Yes, I... Yes, speaking. Uh, who is this? Oh, sorry. Rose Cooper. Briar it is Realty Rose! Briar Realty? My frown deepens as I straighten from my chair. Something in her tone, despite sounding remarkably friendly and light, doesn't sit quite well with me. The rigid pause that follows doesn't help ease the tension that has suddenly descended either. Miss Cooper? I... Yes. Things are a bit busy on my end. I apologize. I'm not certain if Isabella has mentioned anything before, but we're working together on a property at the moment, and... The Armengarde Mansion, yes. She said something about that earlier. Is there a problem? This is about Isabella, actually. She wastes no time relaying everything. The details she provided are admittedly a bit vague, but enough for me to get a gist of what happened. It isn't the bad sort I'm expecting, though still worrying, especially with words panic attack and pale, looking a bit sickly, woven together in one foreboding sentence. But as quickly as it surfaces, I stomp down in the urge to demand answers right there and then. Now isn't the proper time for useless questions. I'll find out soon enough regardless. To Miss Cooper's credit, she neither hesitates nor falters all throughout. There's some sort of comfort in knowing Isabella has someone like her to guide her, though not as much as I would have liked. After all, this is Isabella we're talking about. What are the chances she just said a bunch of excuses so she won't get sent home? High. Very high. Oh, she is so going to hear it this time. You were listed as one of her emergency contacts, so I thought it'd be best you know about this. How is she? I is she doing okay? I had her take a break for now, but honestly, I'd feel better if someone were to pick her up and take her home for some rest. Anthem's a fair distance from Luxborn. I really don't want her going off on her own. I do it myself, but... Oh, you know how it is today. Big day. People everywhere until the open house ends. I'm really sorry to ask this of you, Miss Gales. I know you're busy. Oh, no, no, it's all good. I was just about to leave from work. I hope to leave early today anyway. A few minutes ahead wouldn't hurt. I can be there in a few, uh, 30, 40 minutes tops? Is that all right? More than fine, Miss Gales, thank you. We're supposed to be here until... Oh, excuse me, one moment, please. Yes, ma'am. The faint hum of conversation echoes from her end. It sounds as though the place is buzzing with more people than you'll expect from a regular open house. I was skeptical at first. The house is old, not to mention its inconvenient location in Luxburn's outskirts. Who wants to live in a place almost an hour's drive away from the comforts of a city? But from what little I can hear, it appears Isabella has every right to be optimistic about this sale. If I didn't understand why she was so adamant refusing my offer of help before, I think I do now. To some degree. I'll be resuming the tour soon. Yes, thank you. Sorry about that. I really need to get this thing going. Lord knows how I'll salvage the situation here. It shouldn't be anything Ooh, complicated, but still. Clients. It can be difficult when they want to be. Anyway, just look for me when you get here, all right? I shouldn't be too hard to miss. No problem. Thanks for letting me know about this. Just... Just make sure Isabella stays put, please. Heaven knows how stubborn that girl can be. Oh, believe me, I know. Don't worry about it. I'll have 
have a few of our staff keep an eye on her for me until you get here. <laughs> That's all I'm asking. I appreciate it. The whole thing ends on a surprisingly pleasant note. If only the same can be said for the news she brought. I allow a brief minute to pass to ease whatever tension has latched itself firmly to my nerves. But no matter how much I wish for it, my mind stubbornly refuses to do so. My hands are unsteady against the papers I pretend to arrange after. Lucid thoughts, every single ounce of it, grimmer than the other, grows with each passing second I linger. Something about this whole thing, along with a sudden unease and nagging worry, screams off. Wrong. This isn't the riveting tale I've hoped to step into today. Even on a rush, getting everyone in order before leaving takes nearly a good quarter hour. By the time I make it out of the classroom, the commotion has already died down, dwindling to mere echoes and distant laughters. From the nearby room, melodies from a rehearsing band drifts freely into the air, filling the almost empty hallway with their warm, lively tunes. Any other day, I'll stop, bask in the music, and enjoy what little peace it brings. Not today, however. My steps are brisk, and sure as I march to Edward Hall's exit. The sooner I confirm Isabella's okay, the sooner I can shake off this niggling feeling. Never heard that word before. Uh, that's very close to another word that I should never say. For one reason or another, that single call, of all possible things, has thrown everything off kilter. I'd rather this be over with as quickly as possible. So much that I nearly barrel over a student in my haste. <laughs> Though perhaps it's really the other way around. Oh, Kylie. When I look down, a set of eyes, bright and hopeful, stare back at me. Her arms are wrapped around my waist like a vise, and at my attention, a grin spreads over her face. Buenos tardes, Miss Pink. Hello, Kylie. You know, you aren't supposed to run into people like that. I guess she doesn't have a... Okay, sorry, Miss Pink. She loosens her hold on me, but not a hint of guilt or regret appears on her. If anything, it seems the remark only amused her. A smile appears on my face before I can help it, matching the one on her. Just own. remember not to do it again, all right? You could get hurt. <laughs> you sound like my mama when she's scolding Rowan, Miss Pink. I'm sure your mama only means well. I know she'll be worried sick if one of you were to get hurt. Where's your brother anyway? Aren't you two supposed to be heading home now? Rowan said he's got some stuff he needs to do before we go. Rowan plays a part in this too, apparently. I think As does Kylie. Taking too long. But he promised to buy me jelly babies today if I keep what he's doing a secret from Mama and Papa. Uh-oh. Any chance you'll tell Miss Pink about it? She shakes her head, both her hands go into her mouth as if to keep a precious secret from spilling out. I made out. a promise. She said it's her to Luke. If that's Uncle Luke. Oh, something like a gift? Like a deal. Tio promised to take him somewhere cool when he's old enough. Rowan's gonna prove he's a grown-up. <laughs> Laughter slips free from my lips. The teacher in me wants to give whoever this Tio is a reprimand for bringing about this kind of behavior in children. But if all Suarez kids are so fond of him, there shouldn't be anything to worry about, yes? At any rate, they're nothing but well-behaved, both Kylie and her brother. Rowan, the eldest, may have an occasional odd streak in and out of class, but their parents taught them well. I see no reason to cast any suspicion of bad behavior on as them. As long as it isn't anything dangerous, all right? It's not! Cross my heart! My drawings are a lot prettier than what he's doing anyway. Tio said so. Do you want to see? I drew one earlier at class. Is that why you're here? Sorry, Kylie, you're cute, but I, I need to end this recording, and you're just dragging shit on. Not really. I was going to show it to my friend first. But since it's you, I'm sure she wouldn't mind if you see it before she does. Oh, uh, oh no. I can't stay right now, yeah, Kylie. Yeah, go, go to the next scene so I can end the recording. Her face falls immediately after the words are out. A small part of me feels responsible for that crestfallen look, but as much as I want to stay a little longer, there's another place I need to be at right now. And frankly, another child to look after. Taking both of her hands, I kneel in front of her and muster the most rueful smile I can give. At her age, I'm quite sure she'll be understands what I'm about to say before they're even out. But remarkably, she doesn't look away or pout as I'm expecting her to. I'm sorry. You know what? Rowan has a class with me on Monday around this time. Why don't you drop by again next week? After class? I'll even make sure to wait for you. It's just that I absolutely must leave now. My friend had an accident earlier, hmm. and I'm the only one she has here. 
What about her mama and papa? Her family lives really far from here, I'm afraid. Go the fuck away, Kylie. Do you I don't care. Where Asia is? The southeast part? No, Rebecca, That's you said you're in a hurry. Why are you describing this shit? It doesn't matter. Her eyes immediately light up at my question. Just like that, I know I've earned the girl's forgiveness. Oh, just like Takako. Sure. Oh, my friend, she said she used to live there. Only just a little higher than southeast. But she hasn't come home in a long time, so she doesn't remember much about it anymore. Sorry, guys. I didn't think her leaving the room to leave the building would take this long. So, I mean... I'm not that far. No, says it's but still, weird. I talk to it's, her. It's, it's but aggravating. I think she's just shot. They could be good friends too. Don't you think so, Miss Pink? Maybe if you introduce them properly, they will be. That's what I think. Takako's just lonely. If she meets more, is your friend like that? A little, possibly. To be honest, sometimes, sometimes I can't tell with her. After all, Isabella has always been the kind to hold a smile. Even when things have taken a turn for the worse. Five years, and one would think it's enough time to know a person. But when you consider it, come to think of it, all these years I've never, not even once, seen her cry. Not over a trivial matter, or even when things are tough. Okay, you can go to her. I'll just show you my drawing next time. Yeah, don't worry. I sh should have just let you show me your drawing. It would have taken less time. Thank you. Remind me to buy you a huge glass of parfait, all right? No, I'll get a stomach ache. Takago says so. A small one is okay. I'll remember that. Say hi to your friend for me. I will. I'm sure she'd love to meet you too. See you, Miss Pink. I'll Go see away you later, forever. Kylie. London Bridge is oh, falling no. down, falling down, falling <laughs> down. London she doesn't look Bridge back or wait for any sort of goodbye for me. With a song and extra spring in her step, she bounds across the quarter with as much spirit only a child of her age can have. As if the conversation has never taken any downhill turn for her at all. As if there isn't a single thing to worry about in the world. Not long after, she disappears behind a door, leaving behind strains of an old, familiar rhyme lingering in the air. Carefree. Unbidden. Untro Why are we still talking about this girl? Untroubled moments like this. I envy her. And I resume my hurried pace. A tiny whisper at the back of my mind wishes the same can be said of myself and my own worries. Hey! Fuck it. Oh my... Alright. Sorry. Sorry. Just aggravating. I didn't think a small encounter would take a year. Rebecca Gales received a phone call from Rose Cooper after class, asking her to pick up Isabella Sanchez from the Ermigard Mansion on her way out of school and excited Kylie Suarez stops her favorite teacher from leaving. Yeah, she really did. Okay. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, tell me what you like, tell me what you don't like, and I'll do the best I can to make it right. I'm Llama Joe, and I'll catch you guys later!